Greetings friends, Sleepy here and welcome to another video. Today I wanted to talk about what my thoughts are on the the current trends here in gaming and where the future of gaming looks like it's heading to, my thoughts on that. Also what my plans are for my collection and my plans for the future with the collection and my gaming and everything. Now I've talked about this several times on Facebook and the different gaming groups and I've talked about it in comments uh, here in uh, on YouTube but I wanted to finally just get a video made uh, just to, you know this to give my thoughts and stuff on it just because there's a lot of stuff you know I want to talk about and I wanted to finally get a video film because it's just easier to be able to tell people what I think besides just having to write out tons and tons of paragraphs uh, online so that's why I wanted to get this video film and let you guys know what my future is with gaming and stuff and of course I would like to hear what your guys' thoughts are anything you know I talk about in the video you know let me know your guys' thoughts on it and your what your guys' plans are for the future that kind of thing I'd love to hear from you guys so leave a uh, comment here on this uh, video or make a video response if you want you know I always love watching videos and video responses and you know, that's something I really miss from YouTube is when people were able to do video responses and leave them as a comment I used to love doing them myself so that's something I would definitely uh, like to see from you guys as well so if you do that you know leave a link uh, in the comment section for me and I'll check out your video so for me you know I love video games I've loved them f since I was four so that's 30 years of playing games collecting games and I'm a huge fan of physical as you can see I have a massive collection of like 6,000 games tons of consoles variants all kinds of stuff magazines collectibles that kind of thing so I'm a hardcore uh, gamer and I have been uh, most of my life absolutely just love video games now with the future of gaming though you know it's that's a little worrying for me I mean we're already talking about PlayStation 5 and the next Xbox console so that's the first thing I was going to talk about you know we're already talking about the next generation for me I feel like I barely even scratched the surface in gaming for my Xbox one which I've had since 2013 launch day so that's was six years ago and I just got my PlayStation 4 uh, last year from my brother so I've I've only had the PlayStation 4 less than a year now and there's still a ton of games for me to get on that to try out that I haven't played it so I, I'm not even ready to make the jump to another generation of games and one of the big things you know that I've noticed is that you know that I keep finding less and less games that I'm interested released every year because I'm not big into the multiplayer gaming anymore. When I was younger, you know, that was something I loved. Like when the heydays, when original Xbox Live was out for the original Xbox in early 2000, uh, that, you know, that was something I loved. Like I played it a lot. Xbox 360 came out, you know, I was gaming all the time. Multiplayer things, Halo 3, Gears of War, Gears of War 2, Gears of War 3. You know, I was big into the online multiplayer competitive thing and just you know I'm just no longer like interested in that stuff I don't have the time to devote to it you know there's so many toxic angry fanboys and young kids and people on there oh fuck you oh fuck your mother and people get just get crazy on there and it just takes the fun factor out of it and you know there's some games you know I'm not like gonna be the best at like some people are crazy at the Call of Duty games and they're just so awesome at it and then people get upset because you're not awesome you don't devote your whole life you know like I don't have the time anymore to play 15 hours a day seven days a week just to get awesome at a game and just keep playing it over and over you know I just don't have the time for that and it just doesn't interest me like I don't want to you know just devote all my time only to gaming. you know I do have other things in my life I have my wife I have my son I got friends and stuff and I do like to do stuff besides gaming you know I love gaming but you know you got to have you know limits and you got to have moderation in your life and stuff and so I don't want gaming just to completely consume my life so for me you know I just no longer am into the online competitive gaming and I mean that's where big money is made for developers and that's why you have the microtransactions, you have the DLC map packs and the weapon skins and loot boxes and stuff because that's where they make their money, you know. They're not making their money really anymore buying, you know, you grab like, you know, any game here, this Lord of the Rings, you know, this is a single player game, so there's no online at all. So once they sell the game, that's all the money they made on it. They're not making any more unless they release a, an expansion pack or something for it. And from, you know, a business uh, perspective, like I understand it, you know, I could sell this for 60 or I could sell this online multiplayer game for 60 and then sell 
millions of dollars worth of DLC, weapon packs, skins, that kind of thing. And, you know, if they wanted to do it, if people didn't buy it, because people do buy it. You know, the younger generations, they enjoy that stuff. And they like uh, playing the game, and they like buying the weapons for it. They like buying the skins. They like buying power-ups. You know, there's games where you can buy in-game money with real money. Now, they would not do that if people didn't support it, because people do. So, obviously, that's a model that's working and people are supporting it because if people didn't buy it the companies wouldn't do it and the companies are doing it because people are buying it and you know I can't fault other people for what they like you know I respect uh, other gamers you know if you like to buy your loot boxes and your DLC and spend ten thousand dollars on games every year digitally for a little content more power to you that's good for you that's not something I'm into but you know I don't look down on people who want to do that and I understand where the gaming industry is coming from because that's where they're making their money now. You know, making big money because they don't get money when we sell these games used. Only we do and use game stores and stuff make money. The developer, publisher, they don't get a dime. Once it's been sold brand new, that's all they get for them. So I understand why they're moving to uh, digital content and map packs and all that kind of stuff because that's where they're making money continuously on their game. And that's what people like. So that's where you got to understand, you know, is... We'll just deal with that later. Is that that's where the future gaming is heading because that's what gamers want, and that obviously clearly shows with how much money they make. If you look in the statistics, people are spending millions and millions of dollars a year on digital content extras for games, and that's why the industry is headed that way. And that's not something I want to support, and that's why I don't buy that kind of stuff. But you know, there's more people that like it than people that don't like it. And I'm completely fine with that because, like I said, you know, I respect everybody's views and opinions and what they like in gaming. And, you know, some people, you know, they love playing their Call of Duty. They love playing their competitive Gears of War every day. And that's fine if that's what you like to do. I just, just this doesn't interest me anymore. You know, I'm more of a single player gamer. You know, I do like to play co-op games with buddies and stuff. And that's always fun. But I'm just not big into the competitive multiplayer side anymore. I guess it's just... As you get older, I don't know, your tastes and opinions and stuff just change over time. And mine is just, I've just gotten more off to just like casually playing. I like, you know, I'll play some competitive stuff, but it's just not my main focus like I would have been. Like if, you know, had this stuff been, came out 10 years ago, the way it is nowadays, you know, I would have been more into this uh, Call of Duties and Gears of War and Halo multiplayers. You know, I'm not into Fortnite at all. I don't like that game at all. This doesn't interest me with only bad. I mean, I think the game is. I think the game is interesting. You know, I like the graphics and uh, that the combat. It looks interesting. It's just not something that interests me though. But I can understand and respect others who do like it. But it's just not for me. And so, like another thing, you know, like I said, so less and less games are coming out every year. And for like my Xbox One, now I've had that console for six years, and I don't even have a hundred titles for it yet. Now, this same time in Xbox 360, I had like 300 games. Like, I have a huge collection of Xbox 360 titles. It was literally, like, every month games were coming out that I liked, and I was renting games all the time, and I absolutely loved it. You know, it's one of my favorite consoles. Now, my absolute favorite console, of course, is the original Xbox. That's why I have a complete North American Xbox set. But I also love the Xbox 360. Like, that just blew me away when that came out in uh, 2005. I got that on launch day as well. And I absolutely was excited and loved it. Now, I was originally excited for the Xbox One. You know, uh, you know I just... After Microsoft changed, you know, because they pissed off a lot of people with their always being online and stuff. And at that time... In, 2013 people weren't going for it nowadays more people are willing to do the always online like that shift shifting in people's perspective and their opinions of oh i hate it stupid microsoft i'm not going to be online always and now you got people like oh yeah i like the whole digital thing so people's things are changing and that's kind of where we're headed to so for me you know my xbox one uh collection is not even at 100 titles now there's more i want to get but even with the Xbox One generation, you know, there's less games I want to play because there's so many uh, remastered and some are just literally just ports over of 360 games to the Xbox One. So it's like you're just, you know, buy the same game you already experienced with a little bit better graphic. Now, there's a certain games like they're going to be doing that with the Ghostbusters video game. <laughs> I love that. I'll get that just because I could love could play through that game a million times. I just love it. So there's certain games, you know, I'd like to remaster. And like I love the Gears of War one Ultimate Edition remastered it for Xbox One because they went through, redid the graphics and 
added big cutscenes and stuff to the game, and that was really awesome. So that I like stuff like that when they do it. But you know, when it's just like, oh, here's Grand Theft Auto Five. It's basically this game game. I mean, I did like that they added that first person mode, but stuff like that, like, well, you know, you've already played that game again. So there's a bunch of the re-release games. I don't need them. I already played them on 360, so I don't need to play the same game on Xbox One with a little bit better graphics. So there's, you know, that aspect to it. And then, like I said, there's just, you know, less and less, like, focus on, like, the single-player games. You know, there's just more in the multiplayer because, obviously, that's what makes more money. So, for me, there's less games out there. And that's why I'm looking into, like, you know, do I really want to get a PlayStation 5 or the next Xbox console? I don't know. Like, definitely not right away because, you know, they're talking it could be 400 it could be 500 800 1000 I mean, you got to think, you know, technology costs more. And my Xbox One was $500 on launch day. And my brother got his PS4 was four or 500 bucks for it. And that's actually one I have now, the launch one, because he got the Pro. Like, I don't even have the Xbox One uh, X just because I don't have a 4K TV. And I'm not all gung-ho about having to have the best graphics and stuff. Because if I did that, I want to play old school games. With the you know, graphics don't aren't like the end-all be-all for me with gaming like I like gameplay you know I could play a game that has shitty graphics as long as it's fun to play because I've played games that are like amazing beautiful graphics shit gameplay terrible controls actually ruin the game garbage don't want to deal with it don't want to play it you know I'd rather have good gameplay than have to have masterful crazy graphics and then you know the other thing is like with the way these when consoles are getting, you know, it's almost the point when you get to the cost, like, I might as well just get into PC gaming and buy a $1,000 gaming PC, then buy a $1,000 Xbox whatever console or PlayStation 5 that comes out, because you know, there are going to be multiple iterations, like, there's three PS4s, there's three different Xbox Ones, you know, you got the Xbox One Original, then you have the Xbox One S, which I have, I got for my brother, which I do like, and then there's a new Xbox One X, so, I mean, you know the next generation is going to have multiple versions of that, too, and who knows what the games are going to cost, and eventually, you know, they're going to go to that always digital only version. And I don't want to buy stuff digital because at any time they can take your uh, digital copy away from you. And that can happen for a number of reasons. Like, you know, like this month, they the DuckTales uh, remastered game, no longer available to download. Now you can only get physical copies. And of course, the scalpers and people are going crazy and trying to resell them for high money and hoarding them up. Oh, that's going to be worth a ton of money, yada, yada. And, you know, if you don't have it, you're going to get kind of screwed for a little while. I mean, the prices will eventually bottom out if you just wait for it. But just, there's an example right there. You know, there could be a game out there you want to play, and they could take it away. And it could be out of the, the publisher's control or out of Microsoft or thing. You know, something could happen where, you know, a game ends up going through litigation in a courtroom and somebody had the rights to it and says well you know you didn't get permission or this somebody broke off from the company okay we well, guys can no longer have the game anymore we have to take it away and so legally they have to take the downloads away and that happened with stuff like marvel ultimate alliance the original like in order to get that dlc the only way is to get the gold edition on the 360 and the playstation 3 and that's like a 60 dollar game to get because everybody knows it's hard to get so there, there's content just taken away and that's something i don't like having someone telling me when i can and how i can enjoy games that i paid my hard-earned money for you know i can grab any of these old games here like this lord of the rings two towers i can pop it at any time i want and enjoy it and play it you know if i you know if i buy a digital copy and they take the rights away or i can't download it when the servers are shut down well i'm just out there's 60 dollars gone just might as well throw that out in the trash put it in the flush it down the toilet because it's gone so that's, you know, something I don't like is with a digital thing, you know, physical copy, I physically own it. Now with like, you know, the new uh, titles, even, you know, the Xbox One PS4 title, it started with some of the 360 is even some of those games, even though you have a physical copy, you know, it's kind of like just CD keys because you have to download the patches on day one or the game could be unplayable and have game breaking bugs like Mad Max was. Uh, for the Xbox One and PS4, like when that first launched, you know, that had all kinds of issues. You know, my buddy Dean over at Escape to Gaming, he had tons of problems, had to replay the game three times because he ran into game-breaking crashes and stuff like that. So even like these consoles, you know, even though you own it, you know, you might not actually be able to play it. And then there are some games, like released for the Nintendo Switch, where only part of the game is actually on the cartridge. You have to download the rest online. Well, those servers are not going to be up forever. I mean, they just just, you know, face facts. They're not going to support the game forever. So eventually, some of my games on Xbox One 
would be unplayable if I don't update them, you know, here at the end. And there's a few 360 games uh, like that as well that, you know, once they can't patch them anymore or you can't, you know, you go 20 years from now and you turn on your Xbox One and obviously the servers will be down, you can't go on there and download the update you need for whatever game, let's just say it was Gears, and it needed a cr update because there was a critical bug right at the beginning. Well, future generations, if you don't have the internet because you can't connect to their server, you'll never be able to play that game. So that's just something I don't like. I would like owning my stuff and I like being able to play it whenever I want and whenever I feel like it. You're not when some company dictates it and can take your access off, you know, just one day. Oh, sorry, you know, the, the servers are gone and we lost the rights. So your 50 games you spent $800 on, yeah, that, that they're all gone. You'll just have to deal with it. And other people are okay with it here today, gone tomorrow type of thing. Not me. <laughs> I like my physical media. That's why I have such a big collection of stuff. And that's why I really don't know if I'm going to get any new console, like the PlayStation 5 or Xbox new console. Definitely not right away. You know, I want to see how stuff is going, what the prices are, and the games being released for it. Because I have so many games already as it is. Like, I have a massive collection. So, you know, if it goes to that 100% digital, I'm just going to say, you know what? I'm done gaming with the modern stuff and I'll stick to what I have and I'll just keep buying games for older consoles because I have enough games here to last me the rest of my life and this is even my whole collection. Like I got a bunch of more stuff in storage because I can't even display it all. I, I got a lot of stuff. Like this here is my original Xbox 360, Xbox One and then I got PlayStation 1, Dreamcast over there, some Nintendo 64, some GameCube, PS2, some PlayStation 4. Uh, Nintendo DS, 3DS, and Game Boy stuff here, some Sega Genesis, some Super Nintendo. Like, I mean, there's just so many games. I know I have more games in my collection than I could ever play in my lifetime, but I just have fun collecting it. So for me, you know, I'm set. Like, we get to that where it's only digital and, you know, the like they release that Xbox One discless console, which is the dumbest thing ever. But, I mean, if you like it, you know, good for you. I don't like it. I think it's dumb not being able to have access to being able to physical only, digital only, you know, that's basically like a streaming box at that point, so, you know, might as well get a PC that I can do more with if it's going to be digital only and get Steam and download games when they have sales all the time, because, you know, there's not a whole lot of deals, too, that's another thing that irritates me, it's like, understand, you know, you buy, make a physical game, you know, PC game, whatever it is, you know, it costs money for the plastic, the books, the discs, the paper and stuff, so the digital copy should cost less because it co it's less for them uh, to make because they're not investing in any physical parts but of course they don't want to because they'd lose money but they could really push their digital stuff if they made it 10 or 15 dollars cheaper than the physical and I'd be fine with that like you want the physical one you pay 70 60 whatever you want the digital you get it for like 50 bucks you know I'd be fine with that and I don't see why they can't do something like that because it's literally just a digital key digital product you don't have to pen anything on they don't spend any dime on any packaging they don't need to bond these manuals on these discs or anything so that's another thing I don't you know why don't they give a discount on buying the digital copies you know because they want to keep making money so if they can charge 70 80 100 dollars and people are paying it they're gonna charge it and that's what they'll do so like I said that's just not my thing that's why I don't want to go with digital I don't you know anytime they can turn it off you know another thing too is these games keep getting larger and larger and the hard drives are only so large you know they put 500 gigs in the Xbox One and PS4 I had to buy a hard drive for my Xbox One because there's so many games uh, to install and then of course they give you the free ones which I like well I don't have room for them also you gotta constantly uninstall stuff and reinstall stuff well you could think what are we gonna do if we get games to 8k or whatever and you know have you know 200 ter you know 200 uh, gigabyte games you know terabyte games I mean you know you're it's gonna be to the point where the graphics will be so high be such a huge amount that you know you're gonna tie up your hard drive with one or two games just because they're gonna be so large with uh, what the, the size of the games are and then another thing that irritates me is the constantly needing to update games you know and it takes a while because the servers aren't always the fastest you know I'll I miss, you know, buying a game, going to midnight launches, which I go to a few, but not many anymore. But it was fun. You go there and you're like, man, I just can't wait. Like, I remember Halo 2 coming out, waited in line for like two and a half hours. I was number 20 of like 500. Uh, GameStop had everybody. Uh, you went in and paid. And then 
uh, you got a little sheet with your uh, name on it. Actually, no. That's right. That what they didn't do it then. You had to actually pay. But you so you got a number, and I was number 20 in line. Then we lined up, and I got to go in, buy it, and everything. Went home. I was able to pop that sucker right in and start playing the campaign right away. I loved it. And I stayed up till like 10 in the morning play it, and then I went to see my buddy and I just absolutely loved it. Like, nowadays, you go buy a game at midnight, I bring it home, and... Oh, well, here's a three-hour install, and then it's got to update a 40-gig update for it. And, you know, next thing you know, it's five, six hours later before you can even play the game. And another irritating thing is, you know, I won't play a game for a while. Hey, you know, I'm getting the itch. Let's play the new Lord of the Rings game, Middle Earth Shadow War. I haven't played that in four months. You pop it in. Oh, look, here's an update. Oh, it's going to be... It's going to be a two-hour update because today the internet's being slow or the server's slow, whatever the issue is. Great, now i got to wait two more hours to play games. Like, I just want to freaking play a game. I can grab this old Lord of the Rings game, pop it in the Xbox. I can play it right now and enjoy it and turn it off when I want. So that's another thing that irritates me about this future. Uh, the gaming is, you know, the constant updates, the having the forcing you to install the games because they don't load off the disc anymore which I mean I know it helps with performance and stuff you know installing games does make them run and load faster but you know it's basically like a PC see we're getting to that like I, I might as well just get into get a uh, gaming PC which I actually do have one thanks to uh, my brother that was a great gift from him but you know I mean just might as well get a PC at this point with the way that they're basically PCs anyways and that's just one thing that irritates me about this generation of gaming and the next generation game coming it's the constant need to be online and then, of course, you know, I'm lucky that my internet's unlimited. Like, you don't have to worry. I have Spectrum. They were, they bought Time Warner and stuff. But there's some people in the country, they don't have unlimited data. They have data caps. And once they get to that cap, they get charged extra or they get their internet shut off. Well, you know, you start having 500 gig games here with the crazy amount of, if they want to get to 8K gaming someday, you know, that would eat up your data cap if you only have, like, a 10 gig limit. Like, it doesn't take long, especially, like, uh, Netflix. Like, if you ever watch it on your phone like I do, I have uh, 25 gigs of data on my uh, plan before, like, it gets slow. And, like, just watching YouTube at time, like, especially if you have, like, the HD one, like, it takes a lot of data up. And if you look, you can see how much you're using, and you don't realize how much uh, data is used just streaming stuff. So you can think how much is your Xbox or PlayStation, whatever, with the new console and HD streaming the games... Uh, like with the Game Pass thing, you know, how much data is that using up? And once you get to that, your internet shut off for the rest of the month, which has happened to people, or they get charged a crazy amount for every gig they go over. So see, not everybody has access to unlimited internet, and not all I, these internet providers do that. And that's unfortunate, but that's going to be tough for those people to want to do digital gaming only because your data cap, and you have to worry about that. You know, other people in your household that want to use the internet for other things. So, you know, I can just see we're not ready I just don't see the we're being ready for 100% digital only that they would like to do yeah I think the game pass is a good idea you know you have access to a hundred games and they bring games in and take them out and I think that's great for people who love that but I don't always know what game I want to play and there might be a game I want to play three years from now and it might be off the game pass so that's why I like to have my physical collection and not digital stuff it just is not for me it's not something I'd like I like having a physical copy and I can play it whenever I want and then nobody can tell me I can't play it. So it's just, you know, like I said, there's just not uh, something I want to do, but I see the uh, gaming companies moving that way because, you know, they make more money if they have them digitally distributed and the, the DLC and the extra stuff, you know, that's just where the future of gaming is. And for me, once we get to that, no more physical copies at all and I can't buy it physically. I'll be done with that generation, I'll stop buying the games, won't support it anymore, and I'll stick to the old stuff because I have so much stuff here to keep me busy the rest of my life, so it won't be a big tragic law, I mean, not going to be upset, I mean, you know, I do like to play the newer games and when the new stuff comes out, but if it goes that way, you know, I'm just going to hold to my values and just, I'm not buying a digital streaming box because at that point, I could just get a PC and get Steam then if I want to, uh... Do, do digital gaming and it'd be cheaper anyways and you'd have a PC that you could run like ultra graphics instead of having to buy a PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. Now of course you'd lose access to some of the exclusives but like with Microsoft you know they have been releasing a lot of Xbox One games with the PC versions as well so it is what it is. I also don't like you know some of the changes of forced stuff 
like the social justice warrior type things they're trying to push into gaming like forcing things into games that shouldn't be there you know I'm not gonna go into huge detail about it but it's just you know I just see stuff being forced into games I don't like but it is what it is so you know just support what you like you know if you don't like the digital like me just don't buy it and then you're not supporting it if you do love it you know, I'm completely fine with that. You know, I don't get upset at other people. Oh, well, they like digital gaming. They're ruining it for me. I don't think like that. Like, you like it? That's great for you. You know, more power to you. You know, I'm happy for you. I don't want people to think, you know, that, oh, I'm a completely against digital. No, nope. I just think they should have physical and digital options. should have both. But if they go to the 100% physical, 100% uh, digital, and that's what you like, that's perfectly fine with me as well. You know, that's good, you know. You guys keep supporting it, you know, it's up to you. But, you know, just vote with your wallet and support what you like. Don't make and let anyone else tell you what to collect, what to like, what to play, you know. Think for yourself and, you know, decide on your own. So for me, I don't like the digital only, so I just won't support it. And I will just keep to my uh, physical collection. And that's just my thoughts on the future gaming. So with that, you know, I'm going to keep buying... Uh, Xbox One titles, you know, there's a lot of PlayStation 3, there's PlayStation 4, uh, Xbox 360 titles, still some PlayStation 1. You know, I still have a lot of old retro consoles and the older generations of games that I still want to pick up. So for me, like I said, I'm not going to be upset if we go to that digital only age. Like it's just, you know, some people they are going to be devastated. Me, like I said, I've built up such a massive library of games. I have a huge backlog. Like, I have enough to keep me busy for years and years to come. Like, I could literally play a different game every day, not play the same game for I don't know how many years straight if I was to play a different game. You know, I could play, like, in one year, I could play 365 different games and be a different game every day and still not go through my entire collection. So it would take me years to go through it. Some of these games take hours and hours and hours. Some are quick, some are less, like... So for me, I'm not too worried about it. So I'm definitely going to be waiting. You know, I do like the idea of the new Xbox and PlayStation 5 and stuff. But it's just for me, I'm just not ready for the new consoles yet. Because I feel like, like I said, I have not scratched the surface of PS4. There's so many PS4 games I haven't played. So many Xbox One games I haven't gone through and played yet. Because I've been playing a lot of older stuff. So I will definitely be holding off on the new consoles and the new games you know i'm sure there'll be a game or two that'll come out that i'll be dying uh to play but you know I'm sh maybe one of my friends will buy the new console and i'll play it on theirs or something but i can wait you know i'm not i'm one that i have patience like i don't have to have the newest and stuff anymore i used to love getting consoles on launch day but like the xbox 360 getting uh xbox one that kind of thing on day one but playstation 2 uh, but these days, you know, I'm more patient, you know, I'm willing to wait for stuff, but, you know, I've loved video games uh, my whole life, but that's just where I see myself heading towards is stopping with modern gaming and just sticking to what I already have and supporting the past console. Because, like, right now is a great time to get Xbox 360 PS3 games as people are getting rid of those for Xbox One. And then once people are transitioning to the new consoles, like, those will be even easier to find as people want to get rid of that stuff. And eventually people want to get rid of Xbox One games. I mean, I'm sure they'll make Xbox One and PS4 compatible with the newer consoles. I mean, they'd be definitely smart to it because I would add that huge library of games and... You know, who knows, maybe Sony's PS5 will play PS1, PS2, PS3, PS4, and PS3. And they have five generations of games on one console. Like, that'd be really cool. And that would open up a library of games to them. And hopefully Microsoft decides to, you know, to do that. I'm sure they're going to make at least Xbox One compatible. It'd be cool if they did the 360 and the old Xbox and then have four generations on that new console. But for me, like I said, I'm going to take my time and... I'm going to wait. And I'm just going to, I was just going to show you guys like a quick like overview, you know, of my collection. You know, like I said, I mean, just, just look at this stuff. Like, this is just Xbox original. Like I said, the full North American set. Of course, there's, you know, a bunch of variants in here. But literally, I could play any game that was released on the original Xbox right now because I have the full set here for North America. And then there's a ton of that. And you go over here, more. Xbox one. I have some 360 in time just because I ran out of room But like I said, so you can see here's where my Xbox one games look at this. I have this shelf of games and I've got this shelf 
that's it. That's my entire Xbox One collection. Two sh a shelf and a half. Now you look at my Xbox 360. I have it there. There. Shelf there. Shelf there. Shelf of 360. There's a few 360. There's my Wii U collection. More 360 games. More 360 games. And then my collection edition 360 games. I mean, look, look at that library of 360 games compared to my Xbox One. Just ha I just liked more games on the 360 than I did the Xbox One at the same time. So that's just, it's just crazy uh, to think for me just how many less games were released on Xbox One that I'm actually interested in. You know, I like these older ones. Then we come over here to my PlayStation 1 collection. This isn't even my entire library. I have more uh, in storage. And look, there's all those down there. And then I got more PlayStation 1 and I got my Dreamcast, which has another console. I mean, see, I've just got so many games here. Like, this just shelf alone here is going to keep me busy for years. There's just so many games to go through, so many RPGs, lots of wonderful titles. So for me, you know, I'm set for games. And then you come over here. And I've got my PlayStation 3 collection. I have a small PS4 collection that I got for my brother. There's still more I want to get. But I have that. This is not all my GameCube games here. Just a few. Some of the best ones. And then there's some PlayStation 2, which is barely a, a scratch. Like, I have almost a thousand PS2 games. So there's just a few of them there. GameCube. There's some Wii titles. There's my... N64 games, which I'm only two games away from a full North American set for that. And that's another console that I love and I've been playing a lot lately. And then, you know, you come over here. And then I've got my Nintendo 3DS and some DS games. And then in the bedroom, I've got a bunch of Sega Genesis. I've got Super Nintendo. i got Super Famicom there. Not to mention all my, you know, DVDs there. Got DVDs over there more dvds and stuff in that set and my computer and stuff but you know you can see like i'm already prepped for the future i have enough games to keep me busy if i eventually have to stop modern gaming and you know that might be what's going to happen for me and i have a i just have a feeling that eventually we'll get to that point and you know and i might not you know, I might just not, not be gaming with the new stuff, but I'll always be playing something. Because for me, I love games before they were popular, before they were worth money, and I'll be after they are now. Because, I mean, you see, that's another thing I've noticed, too, is so many people are really slimming down on their collections, you know. They're not going for full sets. People no longer want games that they don't like or they didn't really enjoy. You know, people just want the stuff they already have, so... If you are looking to get out of gaming or to get rid of a bunch of your collection, I suggest selling it now. That's another thing is, you know, eventually these, some of these prices are going to bottom out in uh, gaming, stuff like NES. You know, my generation and like the people, the people older than me, their 40s and 50s. I mean, do you really think people when they're 70, 80 years old are going to still want to buy and collect NES? I just really don't see it. And I just don't see like my son... Or if my, when my son, if he ever has kids, their generation really wanted to go back and, back and play old Nintendo games with who knows what the virtual reality, whatever, you know, where you're practically stepping into the game. Like, why would they want to go back to these old games that their grandpa played? Like, I just don't see them staying popular forever. So that's one thing, too. Like, if you want to sell it now, I would say sell it now while the market's high. Like, it's a great time because eventually you might get stuck with games you can't even give away. Because that's when I, how I built a lot of my collection, too, which is definitely going to be for another video. I want to talk about, I want to talk about how I made my collection, how I built and how I get to it. Because, you know, I know some people see a big collection like this and I think people get the impression like, oh, that dude must be rich. He just spends fifty hundred thousand dollars and goes crazy and just buzz it all overnight and that's exactly not how it happened <laughs> you know i was getting stuff for cheap but we'll talk about that in another video when i talk about how i built my collection but that was just another thing you know just seeing the trend you know people are kind of noticing less and less like focus on retro and more into like the more modern games and especially like nintendo switch like that's super popular so glad i have a nintendo switch i absolutely love the console it's great i love the hybrid being able to take my console with me on the go or come home and plug it in i think that's great so i may support the new nintendo console because i'm sure they'll eventually release one if it stays with uh, physical copies just because i like nintendo games they that is one thing that they do have games exclusive that are near Mario type stuff that are on Nintendo consoles that aren't on a PC and on the other consoles. So for me, I like to keep Nintendo for those exclusive titles. If there's something like, uh, 
multi-plat release, you know, I'll prefer to get on the Xbox or the PlayStation console because it'll look better on there. But like with Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3 example, I was only on the Nintendo Switch, so that's how I'll play it, and that's a game I like. I've rented it, have been having fun with it. I definitely plan to buy that one here at some point. So I may end up with the modern gaming. Maybe I'll just do uh, gaming with, like, the Nintendo console. If, like, the PS4 and Xbox, whatever, 5, whatever the new xbox decide to call it whatever those do if they go only digital and nintendo's one that stays with little cartridges or something like that i'll just keep i'll just stick with the support nintendo and then work on the oldest stuff with this like i said because i've got so many games i haven't even played already that i won't be absolutely devastated so i would like to hear what what are your guys' thoughts how do you like this digital gaming thing how do you like what the gaming industry is headed you know do you like to buy digital stuff do you like the game pass do you like streaming games or are you like me and kind of like the physical stuff and being that? Because I know it's usually the older gamers, people my age in their 30s, I'm 34, you know, people like 40s and 50s, you know, definitely like it. But some of the younger kids, 18, 19, 20, or younger more, like, you like more like the digital stuff because you grew up with it more than like I did. Because, you know, I grew up before, didn't always have access to internet when I was a kid, you know. There was no internet then. And there were cell phones and stuff. I remember pagers. And when we first got the internet, you know, it was dial up AOL. And you had to... Made all that noise and you had to log on. And it wasn't always... I remember when we first got it, you know, you only could use so much uh, internet before you had to pay more money. And my dad would get pissed off if we went over the overages. Same thing with, like, cell phones. You know, it's definitely not like it is today how we're so connected with the world. Which I do like. I think that's really awesome. Uh, that the internet has connected so many people around the world together and it makes you gaming like if you if we had this uh online gaming in the early 90s growing up it would have absolutely blew our freaking minds to be able to play mortal Kombat with some guy in another state like <laughs> this would have been cool now i know they had like the sega channel and some early online stuff but it wasn't like it is today like when xbox live launched in uh 2000 what was it two I believe for the original Xbox, I remember getting that the first thing, Mecha Salt playing online. It just blew my mind being able to play with other people all at that time. Like, it was just awesome. Like, hell yeah, man, I can play that. Man, I love that Mecha Salt. And that's one thing I'd love if them they would re release a new Mecha Salt. That is one game I would play competitively online just because I loved uh, playing that game. It was just awesome and amazing. And like, I loved the online gaming that night. It was just really cool. But, you know, I'd like to hear. So, what are your guys' thoughts on. The way gaming is, what are your future goals with your collection? You know, are you looking to slim down? Are you getting more? You know, what are your guys' goals? So if you'd like to leave a comment, you know, please let me know. Love reading them, love interacting with you guys. And I would love it if you did a video response to this. You know, I always like watching videos. So if you do do a video response, please uh, leave me a link uh, in the co with your in the comment section just because YouTube doesn't always acknowledge uh, videos doesn't always update people so, so a lot of times the videos you can't view them and I don't always get update on people unless you turn on that uh, bell notification so you know if you've never seen my videos or something you know just turn on that bell notification and they'll let you know because it has to do with YouTube and their stupid algorithm and their you know making some videos harder to find so if you do uh, make a video response please leave a comment so I can check it out because I do love watching your guys' videos always have a wonderful time and for me I've absolutely been loving being on uh, YouTube. You know, I've been on here for eight years. I started my channel in uh, 2010 now, started uploading in 2011. And it's crazy to see how much I've seen and how much has come and gone in gaming that time. And I've made up to 175 pickup videos. <laughs> That's a lot of stuff picked up for the collection. So my collection has really grown since I started my channel. And I've really shown the stuff I picked up. And I actually recently uploaded my 400th video which is crazy i can't believe i made it to 400 videos already now i'm over 400 just crazy how time has flown by i made so many great friends here i do want to thank everybody's support over the last eight years you guys have been amazing i've made a lot of wonderful friends uh here on youtube so many people uh have been very friendly have helped me with my collection i've helped with others and the whole reason i created this youtube channel was to have fun and to share my passion of gaming with others who share the same goals and same passions as I do and love for gaming, you know. For me, it's never been about a job. It's never been about turning this into high production values and having Patreons and charging people money to access and talk to me, you know. No, I'm not into that. 
you know, this is just for fun. You know, I already have a job. I don't need another job. That's why I don't want this YouTube thing to be a job. That's why I don't have ads in my videos. They're annoying. You know, the only time I'd ever have ads in the videos if YouTube forced me and said, you know, sorry, you have to have ad revenue on for us. Then that's the only time I'd turn it on if they made me do it. I, otherwise, I don't want to have ads on my videos because I don't, my channel's not about making money off of people. It's just about having fun, sharing my views and thoughts on stuff. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I would love to hear your guys' thoughts and everything I talked about. But that's basically what my plans are for the future of gaming and where I see myself here going in the future with collecting. You know, I don't ever think I'll stop collecting and I'm definitely not going to stop gaming. I just may stay focused on what I have now and keep and getting older past games because those are ones that are really fun with me and I like that stuff. I definitely want to thank you guys for watching. Take care. Have an amazing day and sleep. We will see you guys next time.